What is up guys, it is your LOL support and today we're going to be bringing you a guide on Gragas, the rabble rouser. And uh, recently Gragas has been seeing a couple, um, a couple fixes that have been making him a, um, a very dominant force, uh, not only in the mid lane but also I've seen a lot of Gragas jungle. And um, this is for a good, this is for a good cause. And um, so, without further ado, let's get into some of his abilities. Um, right here, Timo just gets caught out. Uh, slap on the ignite, get the flash, but the um, Kazix found it necessary to secure that. So you know, whatever. But um, so let's get into his abilities. Uh, first off, is Gragas' passive, and that is Happy Hour. Gragas takes a drink from his cask every time he uses an ability, restoring 2% of his maximum health over the next 4 seconds. This is the ability that gives him his lane sustain and his jungle sustain, because every time you use an ability, you're allowed to heal up a certain percent of your max health, which um, is very, very good uh, as far as lane sustain is concerned. So you don't want to spam your abilities to activate the passive but the passive is something that happens and you don't really have to think about it too much um and let's go into his next ability which is barrel roll now this is what gragas is pretty much known for in his body slam um gragas rolls his cask and it reaches a target location and explodes after three seconds and this is this barrel roll um, it has a really decent, like pretty decent range, but um, the unique thing is you can activate it after you roll it to a certain location earlier than three seconds. So if you roll it to a location predicting somebody's gonna walk past there, you can detonate it right when, um, right when the ca like the cast gets there, which is important to a lot of Gragas's burst, um, and I'll explain all that in a bit, but. Um, Cooldowns are relatively, they're on the longer side. Um, it starts off at 11 seconds and gets down to 7 seconds. So next, uh, we're going to go into his, or the next ability we're going to go into is his W, which is Drunken Rage. Now this ability has no cost, um, and it has a long cooldown of 25 seconds. But um, Gragas drinks from his cask, and he channels for a certain amount of time. And during this channel... Uh, he gets increased AD and um, reduces incoming physical damage and it also restores a certain amount of mana during the uh, channel now this is this uh, concept behind drunken rage is very important in the sequencing in which you pull out your burst combo and you become an assassin Gragas um, and I'll explain all that later uh, like I said about the uh, Q as well and next ability is his Body Slam. And Body Slam is a really good tool with Gragas. It allows you to uh, charge through walls. It allows you to gap close. Um, overall, it's just a very useful ability. Um, and what it does is Gragas charges forward and he, uh, he deals magic damage and slows around the first enemy it hits. And this will target against uh, minions. So you cannot charge through minions to get to your opponent. Uh, that's just something you want to know. Whereas the barrel, you can roll that through minions and get to your opponents. Um, so the magic scales pretty well. It scales 50% uh, with AP and 66% with AD. And this is total AD. So it's very important that you know that it's a hybrid damaging ability. Because... Before you use Body Slam, if you use Drunken Rage, the bonus physical damage that you get from Drunken Rage will actually carry over into the damage for Body Slam. So you'll do more damage with Body Slam if you Drunken Rage before the Body Slam. And this is important to your Assassin combo. Um, next up is his Explosive Cask. Now, his ultimate is a team disrupting ultimate great for team fights and breaking up the team and messing with the um, the team uh, structure as far as uh, grouping and it's also good for when you gank you can get them away from towers or you can uh, blow enemies into your tower as you'll see I'll do to the fizz in a second um, I just catch him out of position just a little bit and it's enough for me to throw the cask throw him into my turret and um, put a lot of damage on him 
And uh, this has a pretty good range, or it's a really good range actually. It's a uh, cooldown, pretty short for an ultimate, a little bit under two minutes at the start, and it does a hundred percent AP, and it also knocks back enemies. So those are really good for, like I said, disrupting uh, team organization. So after getting into his abilities, let's get into some of the um, the concepts behind Gragas that you guys will need to understand. Um, in order to play Gragas very efficiently in my eyes and honestly the way I feel that Gragas should be played. Now you've heard me use the term uh, Assassin Gragas and that's honestly how I view he should be played now. And my reasons being is his Q or his body slam got a couple twerks to where, um, or not twerks, tweaks, whatever, but to where um, the damage is fixed and it was altered in a way that it became more of a initiate in my eyes uh, so you'll see me you'll see me going just all in on one person and I view that he has become more of like a, a fizz who is more of an all-in assassin compared to a say Nidalee who is just long range using uh, spears because before what I saw a lot of was I saw a lot of people playing Gragas as a poke champion until they were low and then just cask and then body slam. But I view that he is the assassin now. He is the one that you build Lich Bane on. And um, that is actually a key item to my Gragas build is Lich Bane. And um, the reason being uh, you'll be weaving in uh, attacks in between abilities um, with your body slam and then your uh, casks and whatnot so especially because he gets a AD increase um, you'll want to be fighting close quarters with a couple people and uh, the Lich Bane will really help out your damage output uh, it's kind of like an APS reel or you know a fizz like I said so you'll see that's the f one of the first items I try to build on Gragas is the Lich Bane um, I do rush a little bit of cooldown reduction just for the simple fact that um, if you land a body slam, your body slam's cooldown is reduced and then with the further cooldown reduction, you're allowed to be sort of the old Gragas um, because the old Gragas had a very short cooldown on his body slam and with 40% CDR, you had a 3 second body slam so ultimately there was no walls in League of Legends for a Gragas um, but they did lengthen the cooldown on the um, body slam a little bit so with landing it and also with the cooldown reduction, it does help a little bit. So um, that's why you'll see I'll, I'll base and then eventually I'll buy a, um, a Fiendish Codex. So right here, all we're doing is just we're in the laning phase. Um, Gragas is very high in mana cost, so you guys got to keep that in mind when you're using him. Um, so right here... Uh, I'm going to back it up just a second. Uh, actually, I could take it from here. So right there, what you saw was you saw the, the Fizz gap closed on me with his um, Trident Strike. And now he just playful trickstered on me. So knowing how Fizz works, I know that all of his escapes are now gone. So if I cask, explosive cask, he'll have no means of escaping other than flashes. So you'll see I missed my barrel. My barrel's over here by the minions. And what I'm going to do is right when he lands, I'm going to drop the explosive cask here. Now, the reason you don't want to drop it right on top of them is you might miss and they could fly this way or they could fly that way. But if you drop it behind them, it's got a pretty good blast radius to where it'll knock them back. So you'll see I'm walking, waiting, waiting, waiting. Right here, I turn, throw the cask right there like I predicted. And it throws him into the turret. Um... I wait for him, I ignite, hit him once, wait for him to pass me, and then after he passes and takes another tower hit, you'll see I come up, use the body slam. Oh, no body slam. Okay. <laughs> I guess, uh, I think it was on cooldown or something, but you'll see that that's the way you want to bait out um, kills in the mid lane, is just kind of chill around this area, because... That is the perfect place for you to be able to cast them into your turret or um, catch them out under their turret and you can pull them away from their turret as well. 
So if they're hanging out under their turret, you can cast them towards you and then explode them like that. Um, so right here, just kind of taking a little bit of harass. I am a little low on mana. Um, just kind of drunk or drunk and raging every time it's up so I can get a little bit of mana and just get a little bit of poke with my barrels. Um, once you once I pick up my Lich Bane, um, things get a little bit different as far as far um, as far as damage output is concerned. So right here, I'm going to base, and like I said, I'm going to pick up my Fiendish Codex. Um, a good start. I like I like starting with the uh, Dorn's Ring on Gragas, and the reason I start Dorn's Ring compared to a Tome and Pot, um, and arguably, these are the two ways I've uh, argued building him at the start of the game. Um, either going Dorn's Ring and two pots, or Amp Tome and one pot. The reason being, uh, with his passive and his drunken rage, um, your lane sustain should be good enough to where you shouldn't need that many pots um, if you're playing smart and not um, overly aggressive. So you shouldn't need too many pots. So a tome would be a good um, would be a good uh, alternative and uh, allow you to do more damage. And also, you don't waste the um, you don't waste the gold on a uh, Doran object. And you know, Doran's objects they're nice. I view them as an investment to get an early kill. So if you're going against somebody in lane who has a Fort Pot or who has a Doran's Blade or something like that, if you play passive and you match their CS, you have ultimately beat them in um, in the laning phase because if you didn't buy the Doran's and they did then they have to they have to get more CS or they have to get the kill, which is the initial reason of investing in a Dorans, is my opinion. So I prefer starting the Dorans just because I'm confident that I can get a kill at level six or around there. And if I don't I end up roaming and getting a kill like that. But um you can start a amp tome in a pot, just you have to be careful with your um you have to be careful with your uh health and making sure they don't all in so right here i make an observation and i want to pause it so you saw that shaco just walked through my lane he was about 50 percent health and because he passed through my lane i got to see that he had no health potions um when i tabbed so seeing this the immediate thing i know is i look at the timer it's around the time where uh, a blue buff would uh, respawn so right here, I throw my cask, I clear out the minions, and I leave lane. I tell I tell Kha'Zix to um, cover my lane for me while I'm gone. So right here, um, I'm going to slow it down. Sure enough, Shaco's starting up his blue buff. Um, he's getting pretty low. So right here, get there, throw my uh, warding trinket. Right when I see he's low health, I roll the barrel first. Body slam, activate the barrel for um, a really quick burst damage um, to the point where he can't react to it and that is the burst that I was telling you guys about that would make a significance about his Q um, being able to detonate um, on command is you can roll your barrel to a certain location first and then body slam into the location um, and then right when you land your body slam you activate Q and it's an insane amount of burst damage the only downside to this is the second you pick up Lich Bane, you are not utilizing the Lich Bane to the full effect. And I'm going to explain in a second. And this is going to be very different for some Gragas players to comprehend, or not really comprehend, but to kind of unroot their old ways of just barrel, body slam, Q. So QWQs. Um... Now, when you get a Lich Bane, you get the activation of once you use an ability, your next auto attack will be augmented and do bonus magic damage equal to a percentage of AP. We all know what the Lich Bane does. Now, this is why it is important. The first tick of Q, or your first activation of Q, procs Lich Bane. The second does not. So, um, I'm going to go into that in a second. I want to point out this gank. So, right here, I told the Kale to go in and um, pressure this Karma into coming towards me. So uh, it was a little early. Um, we probably could have, he probably could have waited just a second till I reached here and then chased her down. 
See, because when this happens, if she mantra shield or um, or if she mantra tethered me, she would have been able to get out of this alive. Um, luckily, it was a support karma, and she didn't watch our karma guide, so she didn't know all this stuff. <laughs> but um, so right here, what I'm gonna do is I see her walking towards me. Now, I try and throw the barrel a little bit in front of her, but what she does is she jukes. Now, instead of panicking and reactivating my barrel, what I do is I body slam into position, and I'm going to throw the cask around in front of her right here to knock her towards my barrel. So you see, I land the body slam, I get the slow, I throw the cask right there, right into the barrel, and then you activate the barrel for the, um, for the kill. So you see, that's more... That's an ad more of an advanced uh, maneuvering with Gragas. Um, one of those things where it's it's kind of a trick shot, but you don't want to set those up and like use it when the situation calls for it. Don't try and set up a trick shot. You know, if you do, you'll oftentimes end up missing or miscalculating. And, you know, it's not bad that you try it. I mean, it, you have to try it to get used to it. But um, right there, that was just instinct of me playing Gragas for a while, both before and after the update. So I knew how his barrel works, and I knew how the cask would work. So that was um, that's just an example of, again, learning your limits with the champion and learning how they function as a character. So... Um, it's a little bit of micromanagement. Once you figure out a little bit of micromanagement, you should be good with uh, things like that. So right here, uh, just roaming, picking up kills. I have 71 CS compared to my Fizz's 51, so I know I'm ahead in CS. And also, I am ahead with kills. So right here, we're just farming. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Uh, right here, I'm going to roam to the top lane. And the reason being is the last time I saw Shaco was in the bottom half of his jungle which means he either had to base or gank mid um, and then as you see uh, he based um, right here I just want to point something out for people who play against Teemo this really annoys me and I don't understand why people do this but it's about time I just kind of project it when you walk to gank a Teemo don't walk in obvious paths because he's gonna play shrooms in obvious paths you see what I was doing was Instead of walking through the bush right here, uh, hang on, let me hide, let me hide the hub. So right here, instead of walking through this bush like most people do when they gank, um, you're gonna get hit by a Teemo shroom. But what I did was I predicted that he would either shroom in the bush and in the middle of the lane around here, or in this area. So what I did was I kind of walked a weird path along here, and you're gonna see I'm gonna walk and I'm gonna J out, because most Teemos like to shroom in common walking path so you come here j out and then diagonal cut into lane um you don't have to follow that necessary pattern but just like just know that teemos do what they do like they shroom up common pathways because they don't want to waste shrooms so you know that's why you gotta walk weird when you're ganking a teemo and just a little advice to you people who are trying to gank teemos or you're trying to jungle and gank a teemo Right here, um, the Teemo placed a weird, um, he placed three in the tribe brush, which is a great thing to do. But most Teemos will place one shroom right here. So if you hug the wall and then walk, um, it won't trigger this shroom. So when you're ganking, either hug one of the walls of the tribe brush. Don't walk straight through the middle. So you see right here, um, I hug the side, I dodge this shroom, but... Because he shroomed up three times in the tri brush, that's why I hit one. So that's a little tip for when you're ganking a Teemo. Um, because I know we all like to gank Teemos and we all like to get kills on Teemos. But don't hit the shrooms, okay? So just walk in weird pathways when you're ganking. So right there, picked up a needlessly large rod. I'm putting my Lich Bane on the back burner because I'm seeing that I'm snowballing. And I want to get a little bit more damage. Um, and this is fine to do. You just want to make sure that you don't pick up the Lich Bane too late to where you're not fully utilizing um, the Lich Bane power throughout the whole match. So right here, wave clear, get my Drunken Rage up, and um, just checking out the map, seeing where I could go, uh, trying to get a kill somewhere. Um, 
that's the main thing you want to do as Gragas. You want to roam and you want to find opportunities to get kills. Because, you know, sometimes it's not always going to be in the mid lane that you get your kills. You know, if your mid laner is competent and they aren't feeding you, then you have to get fed somewhere else. And if that means roaming, you gotta roam. And Gragas is really good at roaming because of his body slam and uh, the relatively short cooldown of it. So right there, Shaco came in just to stop the um, push. Uh, right here, I see the Fizz. Um, I just bailed out. I didn't know if he had his ult up or not. Um, he was very passive in using his ult, which um, it led for an easier laning phase. Um, but you want to be careful when uh, laying against a Fizz that is aggressive and that is going to use his ult a lot. So right here, I see the uh, I saw the Shaco shift down towards bot lane. So right here, uh, I'm kind of keeping an eye. You don't want to immediately body slam through this because if you do, you lose your only escape. So you want to keep a close eye on what's happening. You're better off throwing a barrel than body slamming. But if he got close right here, I would have body slammed, uh, barreled, and casked, you know, just to burst him down. But right here. Um, I see that it's a good it's a good spot to go in because everyone's in a tight quarter. So I waited for the right opportunity, body slam, and waited for this tight area. Because if I needed to, I could explosive cast these two away and kill this guy. Because you see, they're split, and I'm in the middle of them, and I have a um, I have a knockback on my ultimate. So right here, putting down damage on the. Um, on the, uh, ah, man, what's his name? Shaco. Um, right there, I made a mistake. I could have, I should have placed my ult a little bit closer to them, but luckily for me, they weren't very aggressive, so I was able to make it out of that mistake without um, any repercussion. So right here, uh, charge back through, cover my lane, because when you roam, you don't want to forget about your lane. That's often what happens uh, when mid laners roam is they forget about their lane and their tower takes a lot of damage and you end up losing tower and you ultimately lose mid lane. So right here, I see a team fight breaking out in the river. Uh, let's slow this down a little bit. So right here, I see I have two of my teammates in the bush. Um, and we're gonna pause this. Okay, so we have two of my teammates here. We have two of their teammates here. One here, one here. Now, if you look at the angle at which everyone is facing, okay, we are facing this way. Like, we are facing towards these guys. These guys are facing towards um, Kale. Kale is facing towards Ezreal. This means that it is the opportune time to pinch, okay? Because when Ezreal is running away, there's a split second where you can, where the Kale could turn and the Ez wouldn't have time to react to it, and we could burst these two down. These two are in a bad spot. This is out of position right here. So we're going to keep playing this. So right here, you see the Kale makes the right choice, turns. This Ezreal is um, right now just had the time to react to it and turn on the Kale. But it is too late because Kale is putting down uh, too much damage on um, on the two people or on the uh, two guys. Perfect timing on the Kale ult. Shen slides through, gets the perfect um, taunt to move Fizz away from the Kale, who is low health. Right here, you're gonna see me. I'm I'm letting them focus down the Fizz because I know they have the damage output, and I'm trying to chase the um, Ezreal right there. I fat fingered my F, and um, I missed the body slam, so it was just a really noob play. <laughs> um, you know, you make mistakes. So right here, I just knew that Ezreal was going to base. I didn't even have to really think about it. Um, just threw down the cask. It was an easy kill. When you're running away from teamfights, guys, uh, don't base in obvious places. Because people who understand uh, where you're going to be doing stuff like that, they're easily able to snipe you off. Like I was able to right there. So right here, Teemo coming in, blinding me. Um, really wasting the blind uh, because I'm not too heavy on uh, physical damage when I'm throwing out casks and body slams and you saw that after I threw the cask body slam combo the blind was already over so if I was that team I would have waited a little bit on the uh, blind but oh well you know things are different when you're in the situation so you see we were able to clean up that team fight relatively well um, and we did and we did end up losing the kale but it ended up being a very worth trade being a two for one kills, 
three for one bases. And I say that because the Fizz was killed, the Ezreal was killed, and the Karma had to base. And also, uh, Timo had to base too. So ultimately, it was a four for, four for one. Because if you have to base, yeah, you don't get the kill gold, but they're off of the field for a small amount of time. So it, it ends up equaling out. So right here, uh, just hanging out in mid lane, just uh, getting my mana back from the uh, Soraka. And I love playing with Sorakas, man. They are just so awesome. <laughs> like, anytime I'm with a Soraka, it just makes me smile. And if they're a good Soraka, it makes me smile ten times more. So right here, just um, stopping them from pushing mid lane. Uh, I'm sitting on a good amount of gold as well. Uh, so just farming, throwing down some drunken rages, and just trying to catch somebody out of position. So I'm just kind of waiting around, clearing waves. Now right here, um, ah, we're going to back it up just a second because this is something that a lot of people do not do in um, like lower levels. But that you should really get used to doing because this could mean the difference between you know having a team fight go in your favor because it was a 4v5 or having a 5v5 team fight now if you look i'm gonna hide the hub um okay so right here i notice right away that the karma is out of position she is walking the dangerous path and the short path this is why you always want to take the uh, long path out of um to gather to group with your team so if you see karma had two options if you follow my cursor she could have gone through here face checking me or she could have gone the long way and ensured her safety but she chose the wrong path and you have to be able to capitalize on this okay so what i do is i gap close for the body slam she sees this i hit her throw down a barrel auto attack and then cask and you notice i place the cask um, she's right here. I placed the cask around here because if the fizz were to come in, it would knock him back, assuring that I got away safely. So whenever you see two people and you're going for more of an assassin move compared to a team fight move, you want to make sure that you place the barrel in between the two people so that if this guy should come, you knock him back. Or if you're killing this girl, she's dead. So it's a good way to ensure that you get away with no harass, but you walk away with a kill. So um, these are just small things that I like to tell people when they use Gragas because um, if you if you misplace your ult, um, as long as you get the damage off, I mean damage is damage, but the placement of the ult can ensure that you get away safely or you get away with half health or, you know, God forbid you die. So right here. Just in base, waiting around, pick up my death cap. Um, I switch it back, I get my Lich Bane um, because I realize, you know what, um, I have enough damage output from the needlessly large rod and the um, Fiendish Codex. Um, and I was building old Gragas, I was building my death cap first. Um, whereas the new Assassin Gragas is centered around getting a Lich Bane and a Deathfire Grasp. And this further increases your damage output. So right here, uh, wasted a few things on the uh, Shaco clone, but you know, what can you do? So we're just uh, preventing the push in mid. Um, you see right here, I'm taking the minions, uh, tanking the minion hits so that they don't go to tower and we don't waste any hits. Um, right here, if you have Oktoberfest Gragas, keep basing because uh, we love that music. We love that, uh, that Gragas music. Uh, when you base and when you play the game with Oktoberfest Gragas or if you look up a skin spotlight You'll understand what I mean. So right here. I see the Shaco. Um, I didn't want him to smite over the wall So I made sure that I cask body slam uh, QWQ combo for the biggest amount of burst that I could afford and um, Basically securing the buff so right here uh, Shaco is in big trouble. I know that he blew uh, I knew that he blew a couple of his uh, I knew he blew his deceive, so I knew he had no escape. So right here, I'm chasing him down. Um, you see where I put the barrel uh, was right here because I knew if you back up just a slight bit. Um, see right here, uh, he used his deceive um, and his flash, so I knew that was down too. So right here, 
Okay, no matter where he goes, a barrel placed right here will knock him towards us. And um, I was under the assumption he was going to try and dis like go this way just in case if there was deceive maybe up off a of cooldown. So I placed my barrel here so that no matter where he goes, whether it's here, 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 it's going to knock him back. So if you see, the barrel knocks him back, and then the uh, the auto attack right after because of the Lich Bane proc. Uh, you can hit them while they're mid-flight if they're coming towards you, which is another um, form of burst. So uh, you can ult them towards you, auto attack mid-flight, body slam, hit, uh, proc Lich Bane, barrel roll, proc Lich Bane, and activate uh, barrel roll again for the maximum amount of Assassin Gragas combo. And then once you pick up DFG, you can uh, further increase that by starting with the DFG um, active. It increases all magic damage incoming to that enemy by a certain percentage. So uh, this is how I like to play Gragas, just more of an assassin. Right there, you see that burst? It was just um, everything with the Lich Bane and the uh, Barrel Toss. Right here, I predicted wrong, uh, body slammed in, ignited, and it was uh, pretty much lights out for that guy. So, uh, come up here. I see my Shen's getting uh, attacked by the uh, Fizz. So, what I do is I body slam, auto attack, barrel roll, activate, and uh, it bursts down the Fizz pretty well. And um, right here, Soraka with the Nanner Steel. Uh, yeah, the Nanner Steels are too, uh, too strong. So, right here, uh, I see that my Kale is also in trouble. So, I tell him to come towards me, but... Uh, I don't know what happened, whether he got rooted or what, but um, he ended up getting feared. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do was while the Shakos are clumped up, I wanted to try and barrel roll them. Um, I body slammed, hit the barrel roll, get the damage off, and then Kale gets rooted with the uh, ultimate, so no damage taken there, and I believe she ends up surviving. Uh, right here, you have to dive this. There's no reason why you shouldn't dive. Knock her over to my team, being a team player, um, but I do end up dying, picking up my first death, which sucks, but it is what it is, you know. Um, we were able to secure another kill, and the enemy team does end up surrendering here, because once you are a 7-1 and one Assassin Gragas, there is no stopping you. So, um, that is the guide. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys um, give it a try. Uh, I know Gragas, uh, before the update was very poke oriented um but now i really feel that with everything that they've done with his w and um the changes around him uh the shortened range of his barrels i really do feel he is an assassin um so try playing him out like that if you guys like it let me know in the comment section below if you guys have any questions feel free to ask and as always please give us a little bit of love in that comment section let us let us know what you want to see in the future you know, if you guys want to see a particular guide, this guide was actually requested to us by um, Majestic Badass, I believe his name was. Requested this guide, and we got it out to him in a couple days. Um, luckily enough, it was someone I played personally uh, quite a bit. So I was able to put this guide out. Um, hopefully this guy was, you know, like I said, beneficial to you guys. Um, if I miss something, let us know in the comments section, and I will try my best to work on that later on. Um, I will include the runes and masteries in the comment section below or um, in the video description, one or the other. Um, so, hope you guys enjoyed. Let us know what you think. Comment, subscribe, like, thumbs up. Have a great New Year's Eve. Keep safe out there and your LOL support is out.